Many years ago, I started off poor. I started off broke. I started off pretty stupid. And over the years, I began to study the subject of success. And I had one simple idea that came upon me in my late teens, and I think it was the most important idea that I've ever had. And it was simply this, that if you study successful people and you do what they do, you'll be more successful. And if you study unsuccessful people and you avoid doing what they do, then you will not be a failure. And what I want to talk to you about tonight is some of the principles that I've discovered in over 20 years of research. I have studied successful men and women. I have read biographies and autobiographies. I have looked at the characteristics and principles of them. I've studied philosophy and economics and religion and psychology and metaphysics. And I've come to 10 key qualities. Now, there may be more and there may be less, but I find that each of these 10 qualities that successful men and women have, that if you have these 10 qualities, there's nothing in the world that can stop you from being an outstanding success. So let's talk about these principles. The first principle is clarity. So it means clarity of thinking. It means thinking clearly, and it extends from thinking clearly to a series of other things. With regard to clarity, it means the ability to determine exactly what it is that you want to be, have, or do in life. And the more I study successful men and women, the more I find that every single one of them, the top 5%, are very clear about where it is they're going and what it is they want to accomplish. And when I look at unsuccessful men and women, or men and women who seem to be unhappy and floundering, I find that almost invariably, they have a very, very limited sense of direction, sometimes no sense of direction at all. As they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. If you do not have clear, specific goals for your life, you are doomed forever to work for people who do. And that seems to be the case. And yet only 5% of people have goals. So the, the key starting point with regard to clarity is to know where it is you're going and what it is you want to be and what it is you want to have and what it is you want to do. The second key with regard to clarity is decisiveness. Be decisive. I've never met a successful person who was indecisive and I've never met a failure who was decisive. Be decisive. Develop the characteristic and quality of decisiveness. We know that the reason why we are indecisive is because we're afraid of making a mistake. But the terrible thing is that the way that we think becomes a habit. And the habit of indecisiveness can condemn us to failure. We can be talented and intelligent and ambitious, but if we cannot make the hard decisions in our life, and if we cannot make decisions readily, then what happens is we always have to work for people who do make decisions readily. Now, the interesting thing about decisions is that about 80% of decisions, 80% of decisions should be made the first time they come up. And if you make decisions every single time they come up, sooner or later you will develop the habit of decisiveness. You'll be very clear about what it is you want, and it's easy to make decisions if you know what it is you want to accomplish. And the difference between successes and failures is not that successful people make right decisions, it is that successful people make their decisions right. The third point under clarity is to have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, you've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true. And you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers throughout all of history have been dreamers. They've been people with dreams. They've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. In the book of Solomon, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And the metaphysical meaning of that is that where people lack vision, they perish inside because they lose the excitement and the thrill of life. If the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision, and even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience. At one time, when we were small, we had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams. The second letter of the 10 is competence. And this is a discovery that I made a couple of years ago, and it just staggered me because I've been studying success for years. And then there's the book In Search of Excellence, and then there's uh, The Pursuit of Excellence, and then there's uh, Refinding Excellence and Losing Excellence, and, and all the excellence books. And I sat down and looked at this whole concept of excellence, and I saw something that I hadn't noticed. It's almost like something brought to the surface of your mind. I noticed that every single man or woman that I had studied who had achieved any kind of success in any field whatsoever had done it after they had made a commitment to becoming excellent in that field. And I began to look and I began to compare and I began to talk to people and I speak to thousands of people virtually every month. I found that I never found a single person who was successful who was not excellent at what they did. That competence 
The commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success, that if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. And only the top five or 10% are excellent. You must commit yourself to excellence. You must commit yourself to becoming the best. And the wonderful thing is that excellence is a journey. It's not a destination. You never get there. Complacency and satisfaction are the key enemies of excellence. But once you commit yourself to becoming excellent, the whole world opens up for you. A very important point of excellence is this means simply this. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Excellent yields, excellence yields opportunities because when you become good, you open up. It's almost like the, the Red Sea of opportunity opens up in front of you. When you become excellent, you come to the attention of people and people try to get you and they give you more responsibilities and more opportunities. You see, when we do something well, it gives us a feeling of self-esteem and pride. We feel like a winner. But if we do things in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. That's why the companies that have committed to excellence are not hundreds of percent better in any given area, what they are is they are one or two percent better in a hundred different areas. That's the key. You see, you don't have to be a quantum leap different from somebody else. You just have to be a little tiny bit different in the critical areas that make a difference. And you, get, you can achieve that simply by making it a goal, setting it as a goal, and working on it. You can become anything that you want to become. The harder you work, the better you get. The average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day. Works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work, that you, in our society you only work eight hours a day for survival. Everything over eight hours is for success. And if you're only working eight hours a day, you're in trouble. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working nine, they've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working 10. You've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour over eight that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off and it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The next letter, C, stands for concentration. Concentration. I think that the ability to focus and concentration are the two keys to success in life. You see, in life, there's never enough time to do everything, but there's always enough time to do the important things. Instead of doing what is fun and easy, which is what most people do, you know what they do? They make a list of everything they have to do, and then they start at the bottom of the list, and they work on the irrelevant things. At the end of the day, they haven't got anything done. Successful people, peak performers, concentrate on the top items. And remember, anything other than working on the top items on your list is a waste of your time. And time management is not just time management. Time management is life management. You can do anything you want with your life if you'll manage your time properly. We all have the same 24 hours a day. And the ability to concentrate, 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 to discipline yourself, to use willpower and perseverance to concentrate on one thing at a time is a quality of all success. Nothing great has ever been accomplished without the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing at a time. Develop a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency is a quality that is possessed by only 2% of the population. 2% of the population do things fast. 2% of the population have a bias for action. In, to, in Tom Peters' wonderful book, In Search of Excellence, he says that all the excellent companies have a bias for action. And all of the companies that do not classify or do not come into the excellence category do things when they get around to it. You call them up and you have a problem or a complaint. You hear from them three or four weeks later. But the excellent companies, you call up with a problem or a complaint, bang, there's somebody back to you in two minutes. So develop a sense of urgency. Get the reputation as the person who does things fast. Develop a reputation for speed and dependability, and your future will just open up in front of you. And if you'll develop that habit of working fast, working fast, that sense of urgency, act now, do it now, do it now, do it now, in selling especially. Somebody calls you up and has a question, get back to them now. Somebody has a problem, get back to them now. Somebody needs something, move on it quickly. If you have to forego coffee breaks or lunch or something else, move fast. If you develop that reputation for speed, it will be worth a fortune to you. The next C is common sense. You can train your mind to have common sense. You can train your mind to think things through before acting. In my experience, action without thinking is the cause of every failure. Action without thinking is the cause of every failure. And common sense comes from taking the time to think things through before you act. Listen to your intuition. Your intuition is one of the best guides that you possibly have. 
Learn from your setbacks. This is one of the characteristics of high-performing men and women is that every single time they